Welcome back to Cooney Connection. Thanks for joining us as there's lots to get through. April is quickly approaching and with that, one of the big news stories we've seen, uh, the total solar eclipse is coming up on Monday, April 8th, the PA day for many elementary and high school students. Joining us from Queen's University, Dr. Aurora with the postdoctoral fellow and Queen's Eclipse Outreach Coordinator. So Dr. Aurora, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. We've seen a lot of buzz around the total solar eclipse. Belleville, Kingston, yeah. Quinty region are going to be right in the perfect spot. So what does this mm -hmm. all mean, Dr. Rohr? Walk us through kind of what is a total solar eclipse. Awesome. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, a total solar eclipse is, the poetic way to put it, is that it is a cosmic coincidence. So every now and then, the sun, the moon, and the earth come in perfect alignment. And if the order is such that the moon is sitting in the center between the sun and the earth, the moon actually covers up the sun completely for us, casting a shadow on a small patch of the earth, roughly 250 kilometers across. And if you happen to sit within that shadow, what you experience is complete darkness for roughly about three odd minutes, uh, anywhere ranging from one minute to three minutes, really depending on how fast the moon is moving. Um, and that is what a total solar eclipse is. It is practically just the covering up of the, of the, of the moon, uh, of the sun rather, with, uh, with the moon. Um, yeah. So on Monday, April 8th, Dr. Aurora, when are we gonna be kind of in, in complete darkness and for how long? Right, cool. So it is a two and a half hour thing, the complete thing um, here in Kingston. Uh, so I'm gonna give you Kingston numbers cause that's where I am, but Belleville region will roughly be the same, maybe a minute odd early, a few minutes early kind of thing. Um, so here in Kingston, uh, the first contact, which is the first time the moon actually comes right in front of the sun, happens around 2.09 p.m. And then it just continues until both in Belleville and in Kingston, the moon will completely cover up the sun, which is called the beginning of totality, which is happening roughly around 3.22 p.m. I say first roughly and then give you the exact timing. By the way, we know it down to a millisecond exactly when this is gonna happen. Um, the totality in Kingston is going to last roughly three minutes and four seconds, which means the moon will start moving out of the way at around 3.25 p.m., sort of doing a copy of the partial eclipse sort of leading up to the totality until 4.34, something like that. Oh, great. So here on TV, our folks at your TV, Niagara, are going to be broadcasting it for everybody here on the Kojiko mm -hmm. network from 2 to 4 p.m. So we can safely watch yeah. it on TV. But for folks who want to go outside and, and safely watch it, we've got our, our glasses here. What would you recommend? Walk us through kind of the, the safety precautions, doctor. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to use you as my, uh, my question and answer partner over here. Uh, so let me first begin by saying you should never look at the sun. Eclipse or not, you should never put your head up and look straight at the sun. Um, and we're almost evolutionarily built not to look at the sun. If you ever try to look at the sun, your eyes squint, they get watery, and you almost have a reflex to look away. I and mean, that's because the sun is super bright. But we're also curious human beings. Human beings are extremely curious. So when something cool is happening in the sky, we want to look up. And so, for the eclipse, we want everyone to experience the eclipse, but safely. And in order to do that, we have these eclipse glasses uh, that we're making available in the Kingston region to, uh, to the Kingston community that can be used to look at the sun for extended periods of time safely. And now these eclipse glasses have on them the, the lens portion over here has what is called a neutral density phi filter. That's just fancy talk for um, it blocks off 99.99% of the light coming through, uh, which means you can only look at the only look at bright things. And the only thing that is bright enough to look through with this is the sun. Um, so when you look up and you're wearing your eclipse glasses, what you'll start to see is cookie bites being taken out from the sun slowly and steadily. Um, and then once totality hits, it gets completely dark. You know it's totality when you can't see anything from these eclipse glasses. 
And during that time, you can actually remove your eclipse glasses and look up. Um, during totality, you can look up. Of course, for kids, we're recommending that li they listen to their parents. And so if the parents feel like the kids won't have that three minute perfectly nailed down, so putting on glasses, putting off glasses, and then putting them back on might be a first. So always listen to your parents or caregivers, but we can actually look up in the sky and we'll be able to not only see the sun completely covered up, but we'll be able to see stars. We'll be able to see six planets on that day if it's a clear day and a comet as well. Um, but yeah, the idea over here is that whenever you're looking at the sun, if any surface of the sun is visible, you should always have these eclipse glasses on your eye before you look up. So the idea, the way to actually use these eclipse glasses is to look away from the sun, put them on, look at the sun, and once you're done, look away again, remove them, and then give a thumbs up because you just had a cool experience. Yeah, once um, in a lifetime experience too. Exactly. Can you watch through a, a welding mask if you can access like eclipse glasses? Obviously, you, you can't watch with, with just your regular sunglasses, but yes. where's the limit no here? Matter, yeah. No matter how many sunglasses you put on your face, it is not safe. Um, even if they're polarized, it is still not safe. Um, some welder's masks are safe, but you have to make sure that they're the right level of welder's mask. I think they're level 12 or something, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong, that you can use to um, use to watch the eclipse with. But if you don't have your access to eclipse glasses, if you Google Queen's Eclipse, you reach our website and there we actually give other different ways that you can, other different, well, creative ways, let me put it that way, that you can use to observe the eclipse with. So the cool thing about the eclipse is that um, you're really covering up light from the sun, the moon is rather. So any little surface, any little hole can actually act as what is called a pinhole and can help you look at the sun without actually looking at the sun. So if you have a colander at home or a spaghetti strainer, you can actually bring that out and put it, put it down and you can actually see the shadows and the shadows will show the crescent or the cookie bites taken from the sun. Um, there are specific pinhole cameras that you can build and all you need is basically tin foil and a cereal box. Um, we give instructions on our website on how to build a pinhole camera. You can really use your hands. The fingers, the spacing between your fingers will also act like a pinhole. Mm -hmm. You can just put your hand out and then your shadows will actually show you the eclipse as well. Um, so there are some creative ways without eclipse glasses to actually look at the sun with. Well, let's hope for the one best. Once again, uh, Dr. Rara from Queen's University, thanks so much for joining us. As a total solar eclipse is happening Monday, April 8th. Just briefly, Dr. Rara, where can we learn more through the Queen's University webpage about kind of some of the, those tips and, and tricks and educational components? Mm -hmm. Awesome, yeah. Um, so one of the things we're trying to do is actually ramp up excitement. And there's a reason for it. The reason over here is that on that day, everyone gets to be an astronomer. Doesn't matter what you do, everyone gets to be an astronomer because you just have to step out, have these uh, relatively cheap equipment to look at, to experience the eclipse with, and you're there. Um, so if you Google Queen's Eclipse 2024, you'll reach our website and you'll get a, a whole bunch of resources, a whole bunch of cool facts, um, all of these nice historical um, stories that we've been doing along the line of the eclipse that can actually tell you about a lot of things about the eclipse, uh, not just why it happens, but why it's significant and what we have, how we have used the eclipse to actually advance science forward as well. Well, your department at Queen's University must be super stoked. What's the atmosphere been like on campus lately? It is extremely exciting. Everyone's talking about where they can get glasses and what's happening on the day of. So we're trying to figure out uh, the logistical details of what's going to happen on the day of on Queen's campus. Um, it, the city, there's a buzz around the city about this, this once in a lifetime uh, event. Yeah, well, the region too. Once again, Dr. Roy, thanks so much mm -hmm. and good luck. And thanks so much for this information. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.